what is some of your advice for running giants to like bringing that to life for players? I say some of the best advice is go big or go home. Giants are larger than life, but they're complicated. They've got desires, they've got ambitions, they've got dreams. You can uh, assign them personalities, but you can also give them quirks and quests, things that they're after. You can give them interesting novel uh, treasures and lairs. You can give them family. You can even give them a mythology uh, that is unique to your campaign. Because I think one of the interesting aspects of giants, at least throughout the history of D&D, is that they have been blessed with quite a depth of mythology, including things like the ordning, which is the structure that kind of binds the giants toward higher ideals, this uh, competitiveness where you try to get to the top of the ordning as close to your gods as possible by accomplishing great feats, you know, conquering a nation, defeating a powerful dragon, building a, the greatest forge that the world has ever seen. Those goals are huge goals, but they feel absolutely perfect for giants. I think that having a mix of the classic and a mix of the new is kind of important and it will give your players a, a foothold to grasp onto the story if they can say okay this is a cloud giant's castle i'm familiar with that story you know but then you subvert it by saying that it's been overrun by hill giants who have you know somehow run amok they got a hold of a magic carpet and they flew up there and took over uh that is a very fun subversion because players understand intuitively uh, you know how it's supposed to be they're like this isn't how I remember the story this isn't how the story usually is like there should be cloud giants here but um, when there's something new there and when especially when it's new in the context of giants that shouldn't be there or that are there for odd reasons uh, I think that's such a really exciting uh, way to present a story as far as like running giants themselves I think it's really important to contextualize and frame giants as being huge. That's kind of their whole thing, right? I mean, it's in the name. Uh, so making sure that that point gets hit home in every possible way when you're running the game uh, is a way to remind your players, like, this is abnormal. This isn't just a big dude you're fighting. This is, you know, he has a, uh, uh, you know, they have a chest that's the size of a barn. Like, how do you even get the treasure out of that, right? You have to figure out how to unlock the padlock, which is the size of a, you know, a colossal door. Uh, these bigger than life things uh, help players look at the world in new ways. It kind of to me, it reinvigorates that childlike sense of wonder that when you're a kid and you see, I don't know, a duck for the first time or something, you're like, what is that? Uh, when you, you know, when you're a, a duck is a weird example, but you know, so, but if there's a giant duck, a, a giant goose in the, in the game, for example, you're like, wow, that I'm looking at a goose in a whole new way because it's bill is the, it's can eat. It can literally like swallow me whole. When it comes to playing giants, we talked about like, there's, there's role playing tips to role playing giants, how to like give that sense of scale to your players. There's the religions, the gods of, of giants as well. And then we also have like different societies, right? Right. So uh, two, two aspects of that. We talk about the ways in which you encounter giants, like a hunting band out in the, the world or a solitary giant who's maybe in exile or a solitary giant who uh, has lost their community all the way up to here's a community of giants. Here's a community of community of giants, this whole massive uh, complex of giants with various creatures associated with it. Um, but then also there's a couple of organizations um, related to giants that are primarily not antagonistic. Like the religion section really has all you need for antagonistic giants. The organization section touches on giants whose goals um, relate to restoring the, the, their ancient glory or preserving the memory of their history or uh, looking in a more cosmic sense or sort of a druidic circle of giants, the world root circle, um, is concerned with preserving the, the heart of the world, the axis mundi, the, the center of the yeah. cosmos. So um, these are organizations that, there's also a section on giant patrons. So there's a, a lot of opportunities to use giants in ways besides just the, the typical against the giants antagonistic setup. Yeah, again, I think it depends on the type of giant. Like, Let's take an example. Let's say that uh, the characters are of a level where I want to maybe have them run across a stone giant. Stone giants are super fun because they're not, they don't tend to be good or evil. They kind of be neutral in their own world. So um, I think what I would do is I would kind of 
have an encounter where maybe there was a misunderstanding, like the giant thinks that you're invading their territory or they've mistaken you for some other threat. And so maybe there's an initial conflict. A boulder crashes near you. You look up and a piece of the mountain looks like it's broken off and is attacking you, but it's actually this giant. What do you do? Your first response might be to attack it, but then uh, as things play out, the giant might actually change tack, decide you're not, not the person, you, they, they, they mistook you for somebody else or they're gonna, break, they're gonna negotiate with you. Being a stone giant and having sort of a lot of sense that the world above is kind of a dream and the world below is the real world, uh, they might uh, think that the characters are basically figments of their imagination and treat them thusly. Or they might withdraw to their cave, and if the characters follow, they sort of enter this wondrous place that might be an artifact from a bygone age that this giant has basically inherited. But it traces its history back to the formation of the world, and maybe they can find stone scrolls that illuminate some hidden mystery in the world. Maybe they can learn that there's an entire giant city under the mountain that's been kind of locked away and uh, secreted and held in trust by this giant and its ancestors. There are so many, there's such a range and a depth to play with when you're dealing with creatures that are intelligent and have such a history in the game. What do you like about giants in general? Like, uh, yeah, like there are so many monsters in this book in particular, but like, why do you, why do you think giants are such a big part of mythology? The reason I really like running giants is because I've ran giants since I was a kid as a dungeon master. That was kind of one of the uh, the themes I understood most, like intuited most, because I think a lot of us are raised with, you know, the tradition of, uh, you know, David and Goliath or uh, Beowulf, the giant in that. And there's giants in Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, there, there's giants everywhere, Jack and the Beanstalk. Right. It's such a primordial, like, story for people you know uh, from western cultures that it feels so fun to get to play with that and present those in new ways you know subvert the tropes or just honor the classic tropes like uh there's nothing more exciting i think than you know being jack and going up this you know magical beanstalk or whatever it might be a hempen rope or a, you know a silk ladder uh up to a cloud giant's castle and seeing you know is it going to be just like i remember when i was a kid or is it going to be a little different or is it going to be very different i think that's uh, uh, so fun because so many players are already familiar with those stories, so it's fun to play with those expectations. The thing I like most about giants is you can play them complex, but also they're they're really simple monsters. I mean, in terms of their design, super easy to run. They're big, tall sacks of hit points who hit really, really hard. Um, and uh, I love that simplicity about them. Um, as a DM, I feel like I don't have to do virtually any sort of prep or figure out what the creature can do. It's either gonna hit you with something, maybe cast a spell, or it's gonna drop a rock on your head. 